Hey guys, this is Infinite Flash here. Today I'm going to be talking about the last game from round 7 of the Sinkfield Cup played yesterday in St. Louis. In this game, we have Magnus Carlsen playing white against Karo Nakamura playing black. And in this game, Carlsen kicked up with, uh, with D4, Nakamura with D5. Nakamura has been mainly a D5 player lately, and I guess he has specific preparation for this tournament. We quickly get an unusual Queen's Gambit with an early knight c3. Usually in this position, white plays knight f3 first, but I suppose that it's it can, can, it can ugh, transpose to the normal uh, exchange, not exchange slot, excuse me, normal slot systems with knight f6. But in this position, Nakamura decided to take on c4 really, really early. If I'm, this looks very, very similar to Note Boom after e3 by Carlson, b5 to try to maintain the pawn over here. A4 to undermine this weakness, and I guess one idea is that if A6, then you can just take, take, and knight here. White actually, I think, um, I think this is actually a sacrifice, exchange sacrifice idea, uh, introduced by John Ludwig Hammer. This is certainly a line that is, I think it's this position, or maybe it's another kind of, this kind of exchange sacrifice is pretty interesting though. Um, in this position, instead of A6 though, um, Black just continued with b4, something saved, knight e4 played by white, and now black um, really has to keep onto the pawn, otherwise it's kind of the whole thing is meaningless. So he decided on queen d5 centralizing the queen, and after this uh, white decided to drop his knight back. He doesn't really want to defend it with a move like f3, this just looks ugly and it weakens the structure. He wants to move his knight back, attack the c4 pawn another time, move the knight back and protect itself, and well, black has to react here. Um, he could play bishop a6, but I think after queen c2, attacking the pawn, white regains the pawn, and this position's not very good. For example, if black tries to give away the pawn here, I think white would just recapture the pawn with the pawn here. And after uh, bishop takes f1, white can even insert the move e4, attacking the queen, keeping the attack on the bishop. White has a really nice position here. So instead of bishop a6, he decided to play c3 early. And, you know, this move is pretty reasonable. White just said, just decided to capture here. Takes, and now knight b1, attacking the pawn again. Black has to defend this pawn, and shows it with, I think only, this is the only move to keep the pawn really, with queen here. And after this, white decided to increase the pressure on the pawn with this move. And here's one of the, I guess, the, one of the critical moments of the game. In this position, Nakamura decided to open up the position, trying to develop this king side here, with the move e5. However, I don't think this is a good idea. Instead, he's already had, he already has a wrecked queen side, and he should probably facilitate the development of these pieces. I think he should go knight a6, knight a6 in this position. And you know, after this, I think, I think uh, if white took here, um, then you know, white black would play knight b4 in this position. And you know, if, this looks it's pretty sharp. This position. I mean, I mean, if bishop g2 trying to take this knight e6 by black, and it's really hard to put more pressure on this knight, and you don't really have a good place where this knight is. Actually, knight a3 is simply just taken here by the queen. Black can actually get away with this, surprisingly. Um, if you can't do this, you probably have just have to focus on your own development, but certainly black is fine in this position. If white plays bishop e2 here, black can even can think about bishop a6, and he has a fine position. So, I mean, even if white gets back the pawn immediately, uh, it, Black has really, really nice development on the queen side with the moves that just knight before. Black's doing okay. I think this was a better option. Instead, after e5, the problem that Nakamura runs into is that, okay, white doesn't really have to take because of bishop before. But there's another problem. White can play knight f3. And, well, black is, black is probably forced to take here. Um, this wasn't actually played by Nakamura. Instead, he played another move instead of this one. And, you know, if, if, I think if just takes, um, I think uh, white just recaptures over here with his knight, or even the pawn, followed by bishop d3, castles. He has a fine position here. White's doing pretty good, actually. Um, instead of after knight f3, Nakamura had a bit of a brain fart, I think. And psychologically, he's never won a game versus Carlson. Just give me a second. That's a connection. Sorry about that swirly, guys. My connection isn't that great, actually. In this position after knight f3, I think black should just take again, as I mentioned, but in this position, Nakamura played knight a6, and one of the ideas of knight f3 is not just to develop, it also applied pressure to the pawn, 
and Black really probably should have just taken the pawn here and just hoped for the best, but now White just captured this pawn for free. Black is left with the weakness over here, and he's in danger of just losing this pawn for nothing. In this position, Nakamura decided to play knight b4, attacking the queen, but his idea doesn't actually work. His idea, I suppose, was queen b3. After this move, he would play rook b8, threatening this knight d3 check, winning the queen, but the problem is, after rook b8, his queen takes f7, unfortunately for Nakamura, and king d8 is met by just queen takes f8, and black's position falls apart. The whole thing is just, ugh, just horrible. It's horrible to watch. Um, so obviously this is not sound at all. Instead of rook b8, Nakamura in this position played bishop e6. Very reasonable. I mean, there's not really anything better, and I think uh, Carlson follows this up pretty nicely. He plays bishop c4, still playing his last piece to get his king out of the center, while Nakamura's king is still stuck in the center and prone to attacks over here. And I think Carl, I think Nakamura is playing pretty much desperation at this point. C2 to try to open up this diagonal over here, but the thing is, Carlson's not intimidated at all, as we'll see. Black can also just take here, but I mean, after just you know knight takes attacking the queen, the queen has to go back, and probably White would just take over here, um, take this pawn and just claim that he's an extra pawn, better position, castles, and you know with the central majority. Black not having castled. White is doing excellently. So, well, even even if that's well, this whole position is just terrible for Black, really. I'm not I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This position's bad. Black played C2. Not that the board is still glitching. Black played C2, hoping for some desperado. White decided to capture over here. Note that Black is unable to capture here first because you would have bishop f7, and if king d8, then rook takes b1. And there's no doubt good discover check because white just plays king e2 and claims that he has a huge attack on the black king. Well, this is just a two-piece two, two piece army that's attacking. So, well, that's obviously not good for black. Instead of um, c takes b1, Nakamura decided to play knight d3 check and, you know, give this double discover check. King e2 by Carlson. And, you know, this is quite a serious threat on the f7 square. Knight c6 is also an idea. Queen c2. Everything's hanging for black. The knight. <laughs> Everything is completely hanging. So he decided to kind of chop this piece off. And I guess the problem with this position is that he still can't take on b1 because of the pawn hanging on f7. And, you know, queen e7 is just my, my um, probably this move right here. I mean, this is just terrible. I mean, if the king ever goes to the d file, you can slowly envision envision a mate here with the rook coming to d1 and the queen the bishop and queen over here are, una are unable to block the d file on the same squares together quite embarrassing for for uh, black and the same thing goes if the king goes there immediately uh white can also i mean not i mean whatever i mean so that's just what i think that's what uh black's idea what white's idea was so he cannot take the knight he just decided to take the bishop and you know Hopefully get this in later, you know? But white just took the pawn over here. This is a check right over here. Now c6 hangs, and the only move to defend c6 without losing a check is king d8, and obviously looks horrible. Knight e7 was played by Nakamura. Knight d2, moving the knight out of the attack of the c-pawn. Um, instead of knight d2, he can also play knight a3, trying to collect the c-pawn this way, but I, I think Carlson's move is um, quite acceptable with knight d2. And in this position, Nakamura... In the in the face of uh, let's say white threatening knight c4 followed by knight d6 check um, played queen d5 desperately ch exchanging off the queens there's not really a better option if you play rook d8 I think white just plays knight e4 and give me a second I think this is right knight e4 right um, yeah I think this is right and you know after this I think uh, White would play knight e4, still getting this knight to d6, by the way. And, you know, black can give this check, and the king can't really go back because of rook d1. So if the king the king would have to go over here, but this is perfectly safe for white. Um, white just has to watch out for, you know, some very random variations, such as like h5 in this position, with some tactical threats as rook h8, rook h6. So a move like knight d6 check, rook takes d6, you have to be cautious as white. Suddenly, after uh, this move, you have to take with the queen, 
and you're okay as white, but if you take with the pawn, I think rook h6 is pretty much actually saving the game for black. The queen has to move back here, and no matter where it goes, black is delivering this remarkable perpetual check along these two files. King g3, rook g6, king here, rook f6, king g3, check. Sorry about this, guys. My board is glitching really hard. Um, if the king go, decides to go to h4, I believe that rook g4 is just winning the queen with the fork on the king and the rook here. And if king h3, we have queen c8 in this position giving that check. That's the point of this tactical sequence. Black actually wins in this position if he, if white chooses to try to avoid the draw. But instead of just, you know, taking the pawn, the more natural move, uh, you know, the more concretely queen takes d6, Basically kills off black and after rook here, check by white, king f7, another check, rook e6, and bishop b2 defending the e5 pawn, followed by queen takes c4. White has stabilized the position and is winning, so black doesn't really have, black is basically lost in this position. Um, maybe this is more of a fighting option than what Carlson played. My god, do you guys see this board glitching? It must be the lag that I'm experiencing. Okay, instead of rook d8, Nakamura will play queen d5, but the problem with this move is it's just flat out running into queen 65, followed by, you know, queen trade in this kind of position. And after knight 65, Carlson just centralized the knight in e4. Certainly knight c4 was also possible, but his move was fine. Rook b8 trying to take advantage of the open file. Bishop d2 planning rook c1, controlling the b4 square as well. Bishop b4. And, you know, Carlson has a 5 on 2 majority, something you don't see that often, and Flex hopes to rely on these two fast pawns, which are very weak and I think Carlson shows us a very very nice technical task of just mopping up here. Knight takes d2, bishop b, knight b4 trying to hold onto the pawn but white plays knight f3, threatens knight d4, knight e1, scooping up the pawn here on c2. Black has no defense and from here this is very, this is child play for Carlson. And well, um, he actually played um, instead of uh, rook, instead of after rook, instead of knight takes c2 first um, he played uh, f4 in this position. Sorry about that, guys. I was just thinking of something. Black went c5. Knight takes here. Knight d3. There's not much of a, any comments that I can really give the give the Nakamura. Is this position is just completely lost for him. Knight c3. King f3 takes. Rook b5, keeping the rook on the board. This position with the the knight uh, the knights on are probably okay for. This is actually pretty interesting. King takes. Can maybe Black can you know drum up some counterplay with knight knight b4 and try to push the a pawn. Maybe even a5. This position is not as clear as the position with the rooks on the board. Whereas if instead of rook takes d8, he plays rook b5. The problem is Black is unable to even hold the position after rook a5, and consequently Black collapses. He decided to play knight b4, relying his hope, putting his hopes into um, this kind of position where. He gets the pass pawn here on the a-file, but it's not enough as king e4 comes, a5, rook a4, blocking the pawn. And, you know, black just has to play a waiting game here with king f7. White pushes the pawns, king e7, and this is really, really easy to play. And, you know, the game didn't last that much longer. Nakamura actually played a little bit longer in this position, but he knew he was lost. He was just hoping for small tricks in this kind of position. And in this position, Carlson played the crushing blow, rook d4. And if black pushes the pawn, rook d7 followed by rook f7 mate is very difficult to mate. So instead of uh, a4 in this position, he decided to move the king back, but Carlson gave this check. King f8, since the pawn was attacked here. e7 check. King e8. Rook d8. Finally trading off the rook here. And care and we'll, I'll just skim through this last part with a winning king, king and pawn endgame here. I think Nakamura finally resigned after... Um, the king went to d4, scoops up this pawn, and as we all know, um, king takes e4, f6 is winning for white, as he can never make it back over here. So, just a d complete disaster of a game for Nakamura. Very disappointing, really. Um, he just dropped that pawn in the opening very surprisingly. Um, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, right over here. He's got to play knight a6, as I mentioned. Not and maybe e6 something more solid. Um, instead of e5 is pretty much explosive. And after knight f3, he just 
had a brain fart and played knight a6, dropping the e5 pawn, and from there I think it's just completely he's gone. The position's just gone. Um, it's very difficult to defend, especially against Carlson's, who's one of the world's best positional players and calculators. So anyways, guys, I hope you like this game. Disappointing for Nakamura. At least Carlson came back. Now he's playing, uh, uh, let's say, uh, let me see if he's playing Caruana in the next game. So I'll be make sure, I'll, ma I'll make sure to cover that game soon enough. Thanks for watching, guys.